morning, everyone. Um, I think that's a great introduction from Burj about our company. Uh, anyway, I, I will not touch uh, into the subject today, but uh, I will answer any question if you guys have any. So anyway, uh, the topic of the presentation today is experience-centric mobile broadband. And I was pleased that my la the last presenter, when he was asked about what does a gigabyte mean for the consumer, it doesn't mean nothing. The only thing is if I access the internet from my cell phone and I do not get through, now there is a problem. I do not care whether it's success, access success rate or is this is a latency or this is transport problem or maybe device problem or maybe operator problem. What I care about is my experience. Is it good or bad? So that's one thing. So it's a very exciting time uh, these days uh, we, we really live uh, because the relevance of mobile communication is touching all aspects of our life. And it's clear, and, and all of our uh, lifestyles have been elevated day after day. Yesterday, uh, just yesterday, I had a conversation, uh, myself and my daughter. I have an 18 years old daughter and a 12 years old daughter. And my 18 years old were blaming me that I am not really treating them the same because I got my little daughter, she just got an iPhone. And my old one, you know, I got her a phone when she was like, I think, eighth grade. And she was like, Daddy, this is not fair. So guess what? Even the kid's lifestyle is being elevated by this unlimited connected possibility in our industry. So that's the other thing. But the question is, connectivity by itself is not enough. Connectivity has to be instant, it has to be ubiquitous, and also it has to be in a giga fashion. Remember, in the last 20 years, all of the competition in the industry were based on volume. How many subscribers this carrier has, how many subscribers this carrier has. But in the next 10 years, all of the competition is gonna be based on value. Valued customers are the customer who are gonna, who are gonna uh, 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 like make the operators make money or not. We have a case study from one of our global customer that they have 40% market share, but yet they have 60% of the revenue from that country. And the reason for that is their competitor, they fail to provide good experience in the very important spots. And because of that, the customer turn to the other operator. So you see these kind of things, and now I think we all realize that the experience is important, valued customers are really important. Despite all of this, and despite all of the curves that we see every day in our PowerPoints, 100, uh, 1,000 times increase, the 50,000, uh, 50 billion devices, whatever it is, you're surprised that you see something like this. So this happened in, la in the last Olympics, uh, July 29th, that the fans attending the London Olympics they were told, please do not use your texts or tweets or whatever only for urgent matters because this will affect the TV coverage. Can you believe that in 2012, after all of these presentations and chartware that we are all talking about, and after all of these inventions that we have, single RANs and, and, and small cells and LTE, LTE advanced, standard, everything. Despite all of that, that's what the fans in the London Olympics got. So are we doing something wrong in here or are we in the right direction or are we going backward? We did not see that warning back in 2004 or even in Beijing 2008. So now, we're getting requested from our customers in Brazil because they will be hosting 2014 FIFA World Cup and 2016 the Olympics. So we're trying to brainstorm in here what kind of warning they will get when you are gonna be in a, in a stadium, you know, shooting high def video or pictures for nice people sitting by you or a nice uh, uh, scoring play or something and you wanna upload it. And maybe the people there will be told, okay, do not do that now because that's gonna hurt you. So why this thing happened? I think uh, the explanation for this was the network was congested, 
So the, uh, they could not go, they could not tell how far the, the, the leaders were ahead of the chasing pack because they could not get through the GPS navigation system that is traveling with a cyclist. So that's what happened, and that's why I think, that, and that was really very important for, for UK because of Mark Cavendish. He was really famous there, and he was expected to get a medal, but he didn't. I think that was because of the congestion. I don't know. Anyway, so moving forward. So how can we move forward? What is it that we need to do in order to avoid these uh, things in the future? So I, I, I asked the question whether we are doing the wrong things or not. I think we are doing the right things. Uh, I think we are in the right track to cover this. It is just as the demand is really elevated every day that we cannot keep up with it. But, but, but the thing that we need to do now is we need to do things right. So we did the right thing by moving to 4G. Everybody's moving to LTE, and that's really cool. But how to do things right? So I summarize over here in the charts in front of you some of the pain points of the operators. This is like 30,000 foot level from my perspective. And let's go through them. So number one pain point or number one action that all of the carriers globally are taking these days is modernize their equipment. Why they are modernizing their equipment? Because they need to deploy the single strategy in their network. What the single strategy is, single strategy is putting there the equipment that really can serve the operator for different technology. So you will have to have horizontal convergence when it comes to multi-access, and you will have to have vertical conversion when it comes to multi-unified, uh, multi-service as well. So uh, a great uh, uh, strategy that we have in all of our products, whatever it's RAN or core, which is a single RAN or single core, which will provide the, 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 the operator the luxury of choosing the technology as a feature. And this will, will give them, will mitigate the multiplicity effect. The multiplicity effect is, it's really a reflection of the chaos that we have in our network today. So in our network today, any, any carrier network, we have multiple bands, we have multiple technologies, we have multiple uh, customer experience, we have multiple business models, we have multiple IT platform, we have multiple devices, we have multiple interfaces, we have multiple antennas, multi-input, multi-output, we have multiples of so many things, so things are chaos. So you have to offer the equipment that will mitigate this effect. And at the same time, you have to uh, and have the, the network scalability because we anticipate this kind of growth, so we have to be able to, uh, uh, to provide this scalability and simplicity also in the, in the equipment. The second thing is the spectral efficiency or features. This is one of the things, because you need to get the best bang out of the buck. You are buying a spectrum. You need to deploy the features that will get you the highest spectral efficiency. But at certain point of time, you will find out that channel limit is hanging on top of you, and you cannot break through it. So the, 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 the thing that you need is more spectrum. So spectrum is the lifeblood of our industry, and that's really needed. And in order to get more spectrum, if you cannot buy it, you have to utilize what you have efficiently. To utilize what you have efficiently, you have to do re-farming, carrier aggregation, broader channels, and also you have to deploy voice over LTE, because when you do that, you can re-farm the circuit switch data traffic from your uh, channel, and then you will have a space to put LTE, which is a higher, uh, higher spectral efficiency. These are the things that we see out there. If you do that and still you got problem and you got some capacity, uh, high capacity on different areas, you will have to densify your capacity. Densifying the capacity is really important. And, and, and it, you guys, I'm sure you have been around for a long time. You remember in GP, uh, GPRS days or, or, or 3G days, we were talking about bit per second. We were not even talking about spectral efficiency, which is bit per second per hertz. So 10 years ago, we were talking about bit per second. It was kilobit per second. And then after that, when 3G came in, we were talking about the spectral efficiency, which is bit per second per hertz. Well, these days, the metric is not even bit per second per hertz. The metric is bit per second per hertz per 
unit area, which is the, the density of the capacity. So whenever you have high density of your, of your traffic, you need to deploy a small cell in order to bring the, 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 the cell site closer to your customer and you get this nice experience as well. So small cell is, is very important and I will cover some aspects of the small cell in one of the slides in this presentation. Talking about small cells, you have to talk about backhaul. Most of the carriers are upgrading their backhaul because what does it mean if you have LTE, if you have LTE advance, if you have carrier aggregation in your cell site, and at the same time, you don't have the sufficient backhaul to carry all of these uh, to, to, uh, to your network. So that's really important. Uh, some of the carriers are even considering non-line of sight TDD backhaul, which is the wireless uh, through LTE TDD. After all of these, the most important thing is how to manage the customer experience because at the end of the day and the trend that's, has, that's gonna happen is you need to sell experience because you cannot sell gigabyte anymore. Well, right now you are selling gigabytes a month, but in the future, you know, my kid is not gonna understand how much he has. Well, what he understands is he will tell me that this phone is bad or this phone is not bad. You know, it's good, is it, is it satisfying my needs or not? So that's the thing that we need, uh, that we need to do. And I will talk in this presentation um, three or four slides about how to manage the user experience and what are the traditional ways to, to, uh, that we used to, uh, uh, to have in managing the user experience and the, the future trends on how to uh, manage it, how to monetize it, and how to uh, uh, operate our network efficiently. There are three business essentials of, mo of mobile broadband. Number one is the pipe, and I talked about it, everything is going up. And I managed not to include uh, this chart in my presentation, which is the 1,000 times the exponential growth or whatever. We used to do that in the past. Actually, in the past, whenever, uh, like two years ago, when, when I used to present these kind of presentations, there was a key question everybody would ask. How many of you guys have a smartphone? That was the question, right? And half of the audience would raise their hands and the other half not. And year after, we used to ask, how many of you guys have more than one smartphone, right? So now even you do not hear this question anymore because this is not relevant because everybody has a smartphone at least. So now this is the kind of evolution that we have in our presentation as well. So not just the technology, even the way we're presenting. That's one thing. So the pipe, the experience, the business. Those are the three essentials. We need to superside those three metrics in order to, uh, to survive in this marketplace. And not just the operators that need to survive, even vendors need to survive. Now vendors even have financial problems, right? So this is a key for the technology. Not only we need to care about operators, but we also need to care about vendors. We need to have innovations to have better cost model in our equipment. One of the things that help us in cutting our cost is the strategy in our product, how we build the uh, platform of the product and invest on that platform and they build so many products in so many countries and so many uh, different bands, different flavors for so different customers. So that's really a key in supersizing the business. So pipe, the capacity is going up kilobit per second, megabit per second, gigabit per second. Right now, there are sites that carry more than one gigabit per second. I was just visiting Vancouver three uh, uh, weeks ago, and one of our customers, they have a, a site on the waterfront in Vancouver. This site carries 1.2 gigabit per second. Many sectors, they have small cells in there. They have different technology, UMTS, LTE. Then the pipe is important. The experience, as I said, is very important and you need to optimize the network end to end, including the packet and the RAN. And more importantly, you need to have this closed loop management between different aspects in the ecosystem uh, of your network. Supersizing the business, you need openness, you need cooperation between operators, content provider, service providers, uh, OSS, uh, everything, you need to have this openness and, and cooperation. And I'll give you two examples that need to happen in, 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 on our business. You know, uh, mobile broadband is not just about technology. 
right? There are so many fronts that need to be considered. Social, political, economical fronts, right? Two examples of those are, number one, the spectrum. So the way spectrum is auctioned and is licensed, and also the way spectrum is fragmented is very important and it will affect the mobile broadband growth and it will affect the operator business on that region or on that country. That's example number one. Example number two is cybersecurity, right? That's very relevant, right? So cybersecurity, the way the technology is advanced day after day, the pace of advancement is very high. The technology is, is going up day after day after day. So that makes our network vulnerable to security threat. So our data and our network is really in danger. And we cannot blame just infrastructure vendors for that, right? It's unfair. Or one infrastructure vendor for that, right? So because this vendor equipment is not going to be there by itself. And guess what? If this vendor equipment is in so different countries and the whole world is having you know, roaming and, 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 and data is coming from a country to the other, then we have to do something. What we need to do is we need to treat this cybersecurity problem as a common problem and everybody needs to come together and join in order to create a benchmarking process to mitigate or to, to address this issue. And my opinion, or my company opinion, is operators should take the lead to address this issue. So this is another example of how political, economical factors will affect mobile broadband technology growth. Three, uh, six, seven years ago, we set the industry standards when it comes to software-defined radio. We talked about software-defined radio, and we invented Singer Ran, and now Singer Ran is really the industry benchmark. So the same concept, software-defined radio, now the core need to be software-defined. Well, not only the equipment need to be software-defined, now the, the trend is we need to have the software-defined capability in the industry. What does it mean, software-defined capability? You have, to, you have to have the ability to address or customize your capacity, your connections, your edge experience, and your on-demand service by software, because things now are so complicated, you cannot even go to the site or your switch room or whatever to do it. One of the very important things is on the edge experience, as you will see here. If you are at the cell edge, this is when you will really need some solution to your problem, right? So, so uh, our vision on the on-edge experience is we need to transfer to, to convert to the on-edge experience to no-edge experience. So we don't have to have, to, we, don't ha we, we do not get this in our network. How to do that? There, there are a lot of features, a lot of solutions. Now the equipment, the equipment they can, provide, they can provide the coverage like small cells. You put it on cell edge, you enhance your coverage, and you do a lot of great things. You can deploy all of those nice features, LTE advanced feature, uh, coordinated multipoint or IRC, interference ejection combining, or uh, for receive diversity to enhance your uplink cell edge, which is very important, as I said, when you are uploading your video or pictures. And also, the downlink cell edge is important. You can do the, uh, the adaptive intercell interference coordination or carrier aggregation in order to enhance your experience on the downlink. So again, this is one of the most important things, which is the on-the-edge experience. Heterogeneous network, one coordinated network is also very important. And, and on the graph, uh, on, the, on the slide here, you will see uh, our small cell. You have two forms of that small cells. You have this spherical form and you have this box form. This sphere or ball that you, you will see here, it's actually four small cells, not just one. You put it in the middle of the intersection like this, it provides you this coverage. Each uh, quadrant of this will support four times one watt. So basically, it's 44R for each one, supporting up to one watt per transceiver, which is really uh, important. Now, our vision of a small cell, small cell is beyond a box. 
This is not, there is no innovation about the box. You can go and buy the box. Actually, uh, I have heard, uh, I have read uh, an article uh, by Qualcomm. They are expecting that the price of a small cell will be the same as the price of a smartphone. And I do, I do not disagree with this. But what's important is, what's more important is how to integrate the small cell inside your network. So after getting the box specs, which is very easy from our perspective, the most important thing is how to, where to place the small cell. So you have to have the visibility of the traffic and the accurate placement of your small cell in the network, whether it's on the edge or whether it's on the blind spot or whether you have high density of traffic. And also you have to have the, 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 the site acquisition is very also is very challenging when you get to the right place. And the backhaul, as I said uh, before, but you will run into an interference management problem. So you need to manage the interference and you need to decide your deployment scenario, whether you will put it on a code channel or you put it on a dedicated channel. And at the end of the day, the management. Management, you need to manage large number of small cells. You need to manage the, your heterogeneous network across so different bands, so different layers, and so different technologies. So three dimensions out there you need to manage. End-to-end -end solution, how to enable QE monetization? Well, you have, to do, you have to have the automation because the number of cell sites now it will be high to an extent that you cannot manage it manually. You have to have the right forecasting and then you have to provide value for your valued customers. One of the things that we do here is how to give the on-demand quality or on-demand experience. If this reporter in the Olympics need to report something and there is a congestion, he is willing to pay so much money in order to get his articles uh, uh, of the air, right? So, so if you can provide the, 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 the interface in the handset and a server or equipment inside your network in order to communicate this back and forth and ask for certain things and then you will, according to the quality of service, that's available, you will get that part of the pipe and you will agree on a certain price by the schematic that you will see, that, that, you, that you, uh, it's shown in this slide, then it's gonna be a success. Then now you are really monetizing your QE for that specific customer. Network operation, managing KPI, KQI, CEI. The old way of managing, managing the, the network, which is the key performance indicators, this is irrelevant now, as I said, because you have different pieces. Even if you come up with an end-to-end -end KPI, it is not enough, because this is network-centric. Now, you have to talk about KQI, which is the key quality indicator, which is application-centric, right? Whether, whatever you have, web, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever it is. Even that is not enough, because you need to talk about the CEI, customer experience indicator, which is a function of the quality, the service, and a function of also the network. So now you have so different types of users. You have your VIP user, you have prepaid user, postpaid user, you have a roaming user, hopefully you get a roaming agreement in LTE, and you have also different kinds of phones, you have different kinds of users of subscriptions, maybe you also have wholesale users. So you cannot, one quality level cannot fit all. So you have to manage the user experience as a function of the uh, service and also as a function of the, uh, the, the, where the user is. Of course, you have to have the management system that does all of this. This is number one in network operation. Number two in network operation, it's a must to integrate the indicators, no matter whether they are subjective or objective. So again, as I said, the success rate or delay or uh, packet loss or opening throughput, I do not understand them as a customer. I understand whether I satisfied or not satisfied. So we have something called uh, mobile managers that we put it as an agent in each commercial device and we have a server in the network and this guy can detect or can, can tell me some of the metrics about each service from that specific user and also it has pop-up questionnaire that will ask him about his satisfaction level so it integrates all of the subjective and objective indicators to tell me how is that user on that service on that part of the network. At the end of the day, we have to have closed loop management. We have to have 
the network performance management, we have to have the customer experience management, and we have to have the service quality management. And the, the key thing here is to start with the customer and then do your closed loop management in order to optimize your customer experience. Just to end my presentation, I think my vision, I am looking for the day that the operator will look at long-term contract challenges rather than churn as a threat. So if we get to that day, meaning we already succeeded. Thank you so much. So actually, I'm wondering if that last point you made is that there will be greater profitability when you actually have uh, more churn uh, rather than less churn. Uh, you think that's possible? Every time we activate a new subscriber, it's a more profitable subscriber rather yeah. than the legacy subscriber we yeah. dropped off the other day. <clears throat> so that's a, that's a very good point, because churn by itself is not now a metric, is not a very uh, trusted metric. To me, the metric is how many valued subscribers exactly. I'm using. That's the key thing. So uh, how does Huawei contribute to this customer experience uh, capability that is now becoming intrinsic inside the networks that uh, you're building around the world. What is Huawei doing to create that, that secret magic ingredient uh, to okay. improve the customer experience? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a, a whole day work. And by the way, I'm going to write it answer. down and, yeah. and uh, <laughs> make uh, everyone know about it afterwards. That's fine. That's fine. I'll take it. So, uh, so the, the customer experience, again, you know, it, has something to, to, uh, it has something to do with the network, right? So, Number one, you have to have the, the features, the, the technology, the spectrum, the throughput. This is the, the, the part that we all know about, right? But, but at the end of the day, the customer experience, I think it has to do with business consulting. So we provide business consulting to operators to see what ingredients they have and, and, and what kind of business they have in this country and how to enhance. It's about management of the customer experience. Again, I mentioned two things in here. One of the things is the mobile manager that we have and the Part, partially in the handsets, in anybody's handset, not just Good. Huawei handset, and partially in the network so that they can talk to each other to tell us what the customer experience is, and then we try to automatically optimize it by uh, the SON. I didn't talk about SON here because of the time, but SON is also important when it comes to create that exp experience uh, automatically. And, um, and also the networker part, which is the, the uh, dialogue that the customer can have with the network based on what is he paying, based on where he is, based on uh, when, what time of the day. And I can ask for specific part of the pipe and the network will grant it to me with a certain money after agreed upon. These are the kind of ideas that we have uh, and we provide to our customers. Actually, they sound like very good ideas. Uh, do we have uh, one question for Mohammed? You have a microphone right behind you. Uh, your systems, you're showing, uh, Norm Piotrowski from AT&T. I'm just wondering, the uh, closed loop systems and monitoring and all this optimization that you have, does that work with other hardware, software, with a mixed network with Juniper, Cisco in there and your stuff in there, or is that just unique, proprietary to your uh, network? Uh. Uh, well, I think we, ha we have to be in the network. Like, we have to have at least the RAN. If you have the RAN, the RAN can provide the visibility, and then it can be communicated through standard interfaces to the core. <clears throat> but of course, if you don't have anything in the network, we cannot apply that, because y you have to have certain parts that are integrated at least in one domain of the network. So that means most of the stuff has to be your stuff to play in? Well, most is, you know, not most of the stuff, but, but at, again, if we have the RAN, you can do the, the closed loop management. But for the networker part, which is the dialogue between the user and the network to get the, the part of the pipe, this is, we have to be in the core because this functionality is integrated in the gateway and the MME. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. So I think, I think that was a great question, yeah. and it, it is an interesting challenge that we have built uh, 4G networks which have become relatively a stovepipe with one single vendor, and in fact, uh, operators really would prefer to have a diversity of vendors and add capabilities and ingredients uh, from one or the other without having to change from one whole sure. paradigm to another, and perhaps yeah. that world is coming. 
it, it is coming, and actually the small cell is a good example for this, because if you are not incumbent, then you need to, and you need an entry point, then you're looking for the small cells. But at the same time, if you are incumbent, you need to protect it, and you need to be against that. So it's very interesting. It is. All right. And thank you so much for thank making you. it Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.